In the Belly of the Beast, Letters from Prison is a non-fiction work co-authored by Jack Henry Abbott and Norman Mailer, who provides the book's introduction. Initially published in 1981 and later reissued in 1991 by Vintage, this book compiles a series of letters exchanged between Abbott, a lifelong prison inmate, and Mailer, a renowned American journalist and literary critic. Regarded as an exceptional contribution to prison literature, In the Belly of the Beast played a role in Abbott's early release, although he tragically took his own life in 2002 after returning to prison for another, Murder.The book does not adhere to a linear narrative structure or follow a strict chronology. It is divided into 12 chapters, which often intersect in terms of subject matter and content. The chapters primarily consist of excerpts from Abbott's letters to Mailer during his incarceration. The central theme that ties these letters together is the dehumanizing effect of the U.S. prison system on its inmates, whom Abbott refers to as inhabitants of the Big House, a maximum security prison. Abbott describes how the system spiritually and emotionally breaks down prisoners, reducing them to mere caged animals. According to Abbott, they only exhibit their humanity when confronted with imminent danger, reverting to a state of animality once the threat is removed. He laments the impossibility of true rehabilitation within such a destructive system and expresses his vehement criticism of the U.S. judicial system. Abbott's motivation for writing these letters stems from his deep-seated resentment towards the U.S. criminal justice system. Despite being labeled a career criminal and serving sentences for offenses such as armed robbery, forgery, and later, murder, Abbott justifies his crimes as a response to a morally corrupt capitalist society that neglects and abandons many of its citizens, leaving them to struggle and suffer. He fails to acknowledge any connection between his own personal motives and the crimes he commits, refusing to take moral responsibility for his actions. Instead, he blames the system he opposes, using it as a justification for the violent acts he commits while in prison. He believes that violence and murder are deeply ingrained in the relationships among prisoners, defining their interactions. To him, standing up against the constant intrusions and assaults on his daily life and spirit seems like the only viable option. His crimes behind bars range from assault to fatal stabbings, which temporarily alleviate his anger and paranoia. He argues that men cannot thrive, grow, or flourish within the confines of such a restrictive environment, yet his continuous troublemaking ironically prolongs his sentence. Nevertheless, his insight shed light on significant flaws within the justice system. Abbott spends extended periods in solitary confinement, also known as the hole. In this cramped space, barely allowing room to walk, he resorts to muttering to himself simply to hear sounds. This environment becomes a breeding ground for paranoia, negative thoughts, and emotional instability. In Abbott's perspective, prison guards and all prison employees deliberately make inmates' lives miserable. He perceives them as tyrannical and abusive, free from any accountability for their actions. They turn a blind eye to beatings and shootings over minor infractions and fail to intervene in cases of rape and assault among inmates. There exists an unwritten code that unites prisoners. Moral strength. The prison system's objective is to erode the strength, reducing convicts to defeated and empty shells. As each prisoner struggles to survive during their incarceration, they inevitably lose their moral fortitude, perpetuating a never-ending cycle. As a result, prisoners develop a shared belief system centered around hating the justice system and its employees, fueling their determination to rebel against it. Abbott, like his fellow inmates, willingly engages in fights between prisoners and guards, viewing it as a form of brotherhood. They navigate the delicate balance of protecting one another while also ensuring their own survival, a challenging equilibrium to maintain. The actions of the prison guards further complicate matters. Abbott perceives their actions as the government's deliberate attempt to stun the emotional growth of grown men and exacerbate their existing emotional issues. These problems are only intensified by acts of rape committed by more powerful inmates, seeking dominance over the perceived weaker ones. Abbott keeps his thoughts and experiences to himself for a significant period. However, when he learns of someone writing a book on prison life, he seizes the opportunity. Abbott reaches out to Mailer, expressing his belief that his first hand experiences would make for compelling reading. He offers to provide personal insights and stories that could contribute to Mailer's book on prison violence and conflicts. Intrigued by Abbott's offer, Mailer requests some letters from him. Abbott sends a wealth of visceral and poetic letters and diary entries, captivating Mailer and prompting him to advocate for their publication. Some of these letters are initially featured in the New York Review of Books, and Mailer advocates for the full-length publication of Abbott's writings. When the book is eventually compiled and achieves international success, 
Mailer petitions for Abbott's early release on cultural grounds, while acknowledging that Abbott still poses a certain risk to society, Mailer argues for the merit of his release. Unfortunately, Abbott's freedom is short-lived as he commits a fatal stabbing of a waiter, leading to his return to prison. The royalties from the book sales now go to the waiter's wife. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.